Hello and welcome to Dragon Tavern with myself, Oliver, Dungeon Master, and Dave. <laughs> the the the. Sorry. Well, let's just say you co-host or co-host. Co-host, just host. There needs to be there needs to be something because like with the NPCs of Taldore, you know. Forget, the one you know, <laughs> Do you really want to go into that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We've literally just started the video. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're yes. here. Um, and we're reviewing the... Was it the second or third? It's the second It's the one. second Dungeons & Dragons movie, Wrath of the Dragon God, as per request by one of our friends who commented... Um, some, one, of, one of the people that watches our show commented and said... He, he actually asked us to do the third one, but we already did the first one, so yeah. it makes sense to do the second one. So this is kind of like the in-between. We'll probably will do the third one if enough people comment on this video. Did you see um, someone commented on our video of doing the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon... Uh, and said that they watch it in Brazil. It's actually quite popular. Mm, that would ah, be a good yes. podcast material if you ever get on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if we ever film it, you know, yeah. right, right Anyway, so, yes, uh, Wrath of the Dragon God, Dungeons and Dragons movie. What did you think? Initial impressions? All right, so we should put disclaimers first. Yeah. Now, the first movie was a, theory, uh, a movie release, so it was in cinemas. This yeah. one was a made-for-TV production. Yeah. So there is a big asterisk in the terms of, of uh, uh, production. Uh, let's let's say that yeah. um, I liked all the bits where Lux was in it. Okay, <laughs> uh, Lux was the female barbarian. She was a total badass. Yes, yes I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, this is a guy that really likes strong female protagonists, as made evident by his love of rat queens. I have a type. <laughs> and let's I not like go strong, any further. dominant woman. And and there's not nothing going, wrong with that. Not, totally fine. And we're not going to go any deeper into what that means uh, or pull that apart. Like I just, place. I just like a woman to tell me to shut the hell up and roll you over like a freight train. Anyway, um, the characters are fantastic. So um, we'll go through, we'll go through the movie. We'll do a little bit of the plot and stuff, so you guys get a basic idea, and we'll just talk yeah. about the wonder that was this movie. So there will be spoilers. So go watch mm. it for yourself. I do recommend it. It's um, hard it, to find. It, it's very hard to find. We, we managed to find a copy. Hate it. Um, it was initially in Hindi. <laughs> and then I found it in Russian. <laughs> yeah. We found it in English eventually. Um, but it's, it's a... It's actually... If you could compare the two next to each other, so the first movie mm -hmm. and this one, um, Dungeons & Dragons, Wrath of the Dragon God, this feels more D&D &D than the other one. Yes, I agree with you 100%. Because they actually get a party together mm -hmm. and there's death. And there's they, there's puzzles yep. and it actually feels like an adventure that you yep. would play in D. &D. And the archetypes are very true to the classes of this was what this must have been third edition um, that the movie was based on. Possibly. Judging by the time that it was released, because yeah. fourth and fifth would not have been out yet. So it was true to the archetypes. Mm -hmm. The rogue was a bit of a shifty, you know, uh, probably an orphan as well. That's the classic. And I, <laughs> the one thing I picked up throughout this movie, mm. I think everyone is racist against rogues. Yeah. Because they kept on saying, Oi, rogue, and rogue, yeah. rogue. Instead of, and they called like the barbarian by her name, anyone else. Everyone by their name, name, but rogue. Yeah. And then the, the one time he's actually in trouble, when he's just like messing around, throwing rocks in there while everyone's building a raft, yeah. they call him by his actual name. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm also going to post my actual notes that I made whilst watching this in our Discord. So if you join the Discord um, after this goes out on YouTube, I'm going to post it because I think it's interesting. Because I was kind of watching. Uh, but he says it's interesting. I take one glass. The only line I see, it's half a pig. <laughs> oh, wait. It's half a pig brother. No, it's no, it's half pig brother. Because the one of the main bosses, you know, at the clown, Stephen King. Yeah. It looks like his half brother who's also a <laughs> of the pig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you can, find, you can find an image of it. We'll just put it here. I will try and find this image. If it's there, I found it. <laughs> There you go. I but, might find the one I'm referring right, to. Alright, we'll try and go for the plot. So the only okay. character coming back is... You're going to have the names. You know me. D oh, Dam God. Demo Deer? Demodin? Dam Demodin? <laughs> well, Demodar. Okay. I think it's it? Demodar. Okay, it's been a few days since I actually watched it. Yeah. This is so a Demodar. So he's basically in the last movie. Mm. He got he failed as his boss. Um, and he's basically had to walk being undead for like 100 years. Okay. And then he eventually finds this orb. Yes. Um, the orb of... Uh, Felzura? Felzura. It's the dragon yeah. that, that comes yeah. out of the end. Yeah. Um, he finds the orb to allow him to become human, I think, again. <laughs> Very confusing. Like, there's a lot going on. <laughs> and to be fair, I was really just taken by the unbelievable cheesiness and not really able to focus too much. But this, okay, it starts off with this weird 3D animated very poorly but by today's standard fire imp 
Uh, who's essentially yeah. a little Malcolm Core creature who's running around and setting things up. It comes back point. later. Yeah, and then we find With out. With a weird about. explanation. <laughs> it's not really explained why it came back. It just. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, we, have, we have to explain right. the plot before okay. we can explain the weirdness. So we've got cultists after an orb. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a, it's a, it's a generic plot line of Dungeons and Dragons. Stays true to the format. Yeah, that's, mm. that's totally believable. Yeah, so, so Daryl Deer. The, let's say the world's worst bad guy because <laughs> he seems to lose all the time it's the same actor as well it's the, the same actor movie. I think it's because he's friends with the producer <laughs> the first one she did this one as okay. well um, so yeah he he cut, he's basically finds this orb mm. to bring back this dragon yeah not Tiamat not Tiamat the, the, the Falcor yeah, guy yeah a Falcor. let's call him Falcor okay uh, Falcor. never ending story sure. let's call him Falcor <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, he's trying to bring back this dragon and the, they the the, the 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 city or the town of Azmir, 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 yeah, um, which wasn't the first one. This is like a hundred years later, yeah. so all the past cast and yeah. died and moved on. Yeah, um, that they, they, they sense this dragon awakening, mm. and the king's guard has already gone. Um, so the the retired guy who's yeah. kind of looking after the ins and outs of the things. The sensei. Yeah. So his name is Beric. Yeah. Beric. Um, when we, we get introduced to his student, pretty much right off the bat. Yeah, his yeah. student who he's you can tell he's got the cocker persona like your student. I, I and they have a a, a duel, yeah. but it turns out he could have killed him. Oh, he could have won at any time, but he let Beric yeah. win. Yeah. So f- to put on a show for the men to kind of inspire yeah. them for the leader that's trained the current king's guard um, guard. Captain Dude, he lets him win, but the teacher doesn't know this until right at the end of the fight mm. when he says, Check the flight on uh, on your hat. Mm. And he says that the feather on the hat that he's wearing had been cut. So, you know, it was like this very, very like. And but, then that really pissed off the teacher. And you think he's like, the, the student is a very kind of loyal person. Yeah. But later on in the movie, he goes, Oh, Beric's going to do it. He's going to fail. Like, <laughs> what the hell, dude? <laughs> yeah. Now, actually, I did get a little bit of inspiration watching this scene because I kind of got to see the world of the, the, the behind the King's Guard, the King's Guard training, mm. and some of like so gave me some ideas for creating NPCs in the games that I run, which is what I often do with the the D and D stuff we review for Dragon Tavern. Yeah, little even, inspiration. You just yeah. take take the good qualities of something yeah. and acknowledge the bad, like even we do with our videos. Like we acknowledge. <laughs> We're not that great at reviewing things. Because <laughs> we forget the names, we don't pay attention. <laughs> I forget the names, you give me crap for the names, I tell you to remove the names next time, I never we don't, write them and down. the cycle continues. Yeah, fantastic. Um, <laughs> and then you guys watch us, so I, I don't know what anyway. to about. Anyway, um, we jump so, so So basically, we, we get a band together to go um, tr- get this orb from Damera. Yeah, the what? notes that I've got here is... They have to go to a dungeon for some reason. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. To get the orb. But we do also meet uh, the, 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 the Kingsguard leader, the one that the guy let win. Uh, we meet his wife, who is a mage, um, who is sick, but also quite powerful. Mel- 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 Aurora. Yeah. Mel- Aurora. Yeah. Yes. And that <laughs> plot is weird as well. Yes. It kind um, of jumps back to it as it goes, and yeah. she's like turning into like an undead thing yeah she's sick. she's got some kind of affliction some kind of curse because he got her hair yeah yeah somehow it's a very strange there's like five six different plot I, lines. I think the orb gives him power to be able to just take hair from this random ass girl <laughs> in the city yeah um who's not a part of the mage guild she's like training to be a mage yeah so there's no reason to take control of her no but another thing that gave me inspiration was the fact that she was learning the arcane and she was yeah. like trial and error and often in she's D&D cute. yeah she's really cute I'm just trying um, yeah oh, often in D&D the, the, the people that you meet are cute are, are, <laughs> 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 are like the mages and stuff you're going to go to the mages yeah. guild you meet the old wise and dude but you never really kind of meet people that are in the training uh, and, and still learning the ways of the arcane so that kind of like mm. gave me a little bit more layering mm. for NPCs but anyway yeah, um, so, so we'll get we'll the part together. together we'll go through it so yeah. we've got Beric and now uh, it turns out on the DVD um, and if you look on the Wikipedia pages there as well they actually release what what um level and class they are right. and what alignment oh wow um so beric the main guy um he's a fighter yeah okay makes sense. um level seven nice and he's um i believe lawful new uh, lawful good lawful good okay yeah because back in the day standard. alignments mattered a bit yeah um a lot of people now don't use alignments too much because they feel it's that it limits the character you yeah. can totally still do it and in fact even in the dungeon master's guide um and player's handbook for fifth edition the most recent it's still all there but it punishes you pretty harshly for going to a different alignment yeah and some of the older systems that also it was really brutal you would lose like anyway um, all right so yeah. the love of my life lux um she's a barbarian 
Um, she's level seven. He's got um, a five. She, she I got a five. <laughs> she's chaotic good. Yeah, I like cool. that. Yeah. Um, and I'm in love with her. I like the chaotics. I just like any chaotic. Chaotic neutral. Chaotic good. Chaotic. Well, oh, you like the next character then? Yeah. It's Nim. <laughs> yeah. The rogue. Or rogue, as he's called throughout the entire the movie, because no one pays him any mind. To be fair, he does lie like a fair bit to the party. He's um, kind of a dick. But he also I'm not getting it wrong. Them. But he's <laughs> kind of. They're asking for him to be a dick if they can't address him by his name. Yeah, exactly. It's his like, oh, rogue, rogue, rogue. I have a name. Yeah, it's fucking Nim, by the way. Imagine if I just said, oi, DM. Yeah. DM. Yo, oi, player. DM. Yeah. Player, come and. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Ranger. PC, yeah, oh, yeah. PC, fucking ranger. Anyway, um, anyway, so yeah, N Nim, he's level seven as well. Uh, Kaelic, Nim, actually my favorite out of all of them. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a rogue lover. I play rogues continuously. They're my favorite class, and yeah, well, Nim is fab. Oh uh, yeah, because he did some fantasy like trick work and yeah. uh, peace tolls, and there's a lot of D and D elements he drops. Yeah. He probably drops the most of like D and D. Yeah, I'd stuff. say so. There's also that moment where he's like, "You guys have to turn away because what I'm about to do to this mechanism is an ancient secret handed down to the rogues for thousands of generations." That was a bad joke. And man. then all he does is just like turn hand. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was, uh, I even that's knew classic. that was going to happen. I know, me too. I knew it was and he was using my girl to do it as well. And he's like 40 or something as well. He's quite he's the oldest Yeah, and you kind of feel like something maybe Lux and um, Nim, something that was going to happen there. Yeah. But they kind of didn't go with it. So Maybe um, in the third movie we want to review that. Yeah, so. there's there's Ormeline. She's the elf. With, uh, <laughs> wizard. <laughs> every, Ormeline. Every episode. I, you, I need to start classes. writing down the numbers. Okay, and she's Thanks. actually level 9. Ooh. She's level she's 9. Nice. And she's neutral. Cool, neutral, yep, go for it. And the the, the, the one that didn't really do anything, Dorian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is just the name, is like, is, is <laughs> disappointing. Dorian. Dorian. No, it's like Dorian, like, um... JD. JD from Scrubs, <laughs> Dorian. Uh, that's so Dorian. Um, uh, he's a, a cleric. Cool. Uh, level 7, and he's neutral, and he's got a weird-ass haircut. Yes. Now, my next note in the, in, in the lineage of notes is costumes are next level. That's actually quite believable. For a straight-to-TV movie, the costume budget was not bad. The armor looks like armor, and it's involved. It's not just like one or two pieces. It's like proper chain mail and plate. It's like high-end porn level costuming, <laughs> I reckon. But not move it on. So yeah, that's the party, yeah. and they, they kind of go on this adventure. Dory dies pretty early on. Pretty, he gets um, frozen by a dragon and eaten, with, and it's bad CGI. So you kind of just see him get frozen, and then you just see the the dragon kind of go off camera and then tilt its head back. Yeah. So the, essentially, when you when you introduce a character that is perceived to be a main character, a protagonist, and then you kill them in a film or a movie, it's kind of the try, kind of give the idea. George Martin, uh, Martin does this a lot. It's trying to give the idea that anything can happen, mm, and the audience like cannot it. rest on their laurels and think they know what's going to occur. So I kind of like that bit because I yeah. didn't expect Dorian to die. No, neither. Did I, I kind of expect that fire party to. They're, they're a band of, of people who up together and yeah. then they get along and then happy. But they did do a lot of unexpected things. Of killing Dorian was yeah. one of them. Um, kind of taking out the rogue and the wizard because they get injured yeah. to a point they yeah. can't help with the, the like the third act of yeah. the movie. So it's the same thing as. But Lux is there. It's, <laughs> it's the same thing as when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and the DM will make you make death saves. It kind of makes, mm. lets you know that. Yeah, okay, we're not guaranteed to get through this thing, and it's a very popular storytelling device. Mm. Um, so, but yeah, yeah. They, they, they're trying to find the orb, classic party, we've got the classic makeup, let's go find the orb. Yeah, so basically they're trying to find the orb, that during the time they're going to find the orb, they find Klax, mm -hmm. which is this lich kind of creature. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, like, looking into the behind the scenes of that, the, the way they had um, Klax, which is a lich, yeah. is how he's actually just, how liches are actually described in D&D. Right. So that's actually the proper, the, that's what the, they can actually the look like. It's not like World of Warcraft kind of liches or like with the big robes and stuff like mm. that. The lich yeah. is, is more kind of simplified. Like yeah, that. so that, that, that's, that's how we see it throughout. Um, now at this point, we are kind of flicking back to the woman mage and how ill she is. She, and okay, she, so she's cursed. Yeah. And she's kind of going a bit crazy. A little bit. Arcane Madness. It's pretty much all you need to know about that subplot there. Now, now we also <laughs> keep seeing the weird fire things. So, essentially, oh. Mage summons this weird little... I don't know what he is, because I haven't come across it. It's like a lava... Like a fire imp, maybe? I don't it's think like it's a kid. It's like a, it's like a four-year-old It's like a lava fire. kind of built yeah. golem. Yeah. Midget. Fire golem. Kid. No, I would say midget. Fire. The little person... Yeah, trying to cover out of that one. Yeah, we can both that. It's fine. So, yeah, it's good. Running around and calling stuff. Um, again, this comes back later in the film, and it's... 
hilarious CGI from today's standards, but still fun. Um, anyway, yeah. that's when we kind of meet It's Half Pig Brother, um, who... Uh, I need to find the picture. I don't know what you're on about. It? <laughs> it's alright, I'll send I'll find it. You'll find it. Right. Uh, giant Ice Dragon. Um, mm. Now, see, I was a bit behind with my notes. But when the Ice Dragon kills him, mm. to be fair... It's because he ran away from the party and engaged it one-on-one. -on -one. He tried to fight an ice dragon by himself. At level... Seven. At level seven. He doesn't know he's level seven. <laughs> <laughs> he just knows he's a cleric. <laughs> okay, but still, you try to fight a dragon on your own, it's going to go badly in D&D or in real life. Um, well, maybe he didn't roll high enough persuasion. Anyway, as the party travels on, the little fire dude starts setting some scrolls on fire. Back, um, back at the, back at the town. other, back at the Mages Guild. Yeah. Um, but then they figure out that he's actually trying to help them because the book that they're trying to decode the meaning of or something has to be set on fire for it to work. Yeah. Kind of like the One Ring from Lord Which of the Rings. Which they don't really explain. No. And then the Mage One. Oh, I think it's explained because the the gods at the end because yeah. she gets the the anti orb. Right. She gets the end. <laughs> it's such a weird movie. It's so weird. She gets the anti orb at the end, so I think it's the gods kind of pushing her in that direction. So right. I think it's the, it's the divine influence, because she says at the beginning there's two kinds of magic in the world. Mm -hmm. There's ones you study in books, and yeah. there's divine. Yeah. And I think this is all divine intervention. Again, true to D&D. Um, mm. So essentially she says, okay, we need to set the book on fire to reveal its real message, much like the inscribing on the One Ring from Lord of the Rings, and the other mages are like, well, if you're wrong about this, we're destroying an ancient artifact and it's gone forever. But she's a crazy person dying. Who would let's believe her. Anyway, we switch back to the party. So they find a statue. Yeah, so basically they find a statue. And um, we're kind of skipping along a bit. Because, I mean, they go to a goblin town. And all that, yeah, that's where the dragon shows up. Yeah. Um, they find... This is like a puzzle bit. So yeah. they, they come across this little statue with some kind of code on it. Or some yeah. kind of riddle. And they have to try and figure it out. Then all of a sudden this army <laughs> kind of appears around them. and Pretty starts, instantly. And pretty instantly. And then starts attacking them, and, and my love Lux, she, she, she's the hero, and starts yeah. holding them off, and so does all my line. Yeah, those two basically single-handedly slow down this invasion while the other two try to figure out the puzzle. Yeah, it's a cool, like, the girls hold them off while the guys actually just try yeah. and figure this puzzle out, which now, the they take the time doing. The puzzle's actually kind of cool. If you wanted to use one of these, the same kind of puzzle in your game, you totally could. This is how it works. So on the side of the statue, they've got these letters, like, embossed. Uh, and it says, here lies the blah, 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 whatever you want, um, with a Stop. question. Oh, that's my mum. Do you want to answer? Yeah. Okay. Hey, mum, how's it going? Hi, darling. So, we're just, yeah, we're just, we're just filming a video right now. Um, can I, can I message you when we're done? Hey, Ollie, like... put on pants, for God's sake. <laughs> um, I'll call, okay, cool. Thanks, mum. Love you. Bye. My mum, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so uh, this is this is. I have to edit all that out. I so can just... totally leave that in. Um, it was only like thirty seconds. Anyway, um, so the statue has uh, a little epitaph kind of thing with uh, a riddle at the end, and the way to figure it out was to press in some of the letters throughout uh, throughout the epitaph, and then those letters make up the answer to the riddle, mm. and then it opens. And it opens. You yeah. can totally use that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm it's, a, it's a simple. Game. Okay, that's why we say this this movie is more like the other one because this had more problem solving, yeah. which you would encounter more in D and D. Yeah. Um. So I like that aspect of it, um, mainly because I could see my girl getting badass and getting a little crazy. <laughs> He's got a type. Um. Next comment from me on my notes is inside is a whole mess of crap. Yeah. Because basically they're a dungeon own... crawl. Yeah. Exactly. Weird. And this, this, what was the weird things coming from the roof? It did not make sense. So, <laughs> I, do you know any idea what that would be? No idea. Of course, I haven't read 30, so maybe it's some weird thing. Uh, I don't know, those weird kind of suction <laughs> things. I don't know. Yeah. I, they, I, they tried to stop them, it failed, and yeah. they moved on to the next area. But at this point, they're finally working as a team. And if you've ever DM'd a new group of people, and especially ones that haven't played D&D before, and they start working together using their archetypes as a team to solve puzzles, you're like, yay, they did it! That's so, what Dorian died. Yeah. Well, yeah it's probably Dorian's involved. Don't we take on an that. ice dragon by yourself. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> we aren't going to learn anything in this video. That's what you learn. That's what you learn. Um, anyway, they're going through classic dungeon crawl. Mm. I've got to stop using the word classic. Every four sentences. You stop it, pointing it out. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, they find a mirror trap yeah. room. So they see a room with a whole bunch of things. Does, now, <laughs> this is actually quite funny. I can't remember who it is, but one of them has a bird. 
<laughs> really funny. I cracked up, and yeah. it's not. I don't know whether it's supposed to be funny or yeah, not, but it, but was. it was. Okay, so well, it's all the line, all, yeah. all the line. The the, yeah. the elf wizard. Yeah. Um, she goes. I've had. Uh, it starts off like a porcelain thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah, she yeah. kind of uses her magic to make it come to life to a pigeon. Yeah. It's a little white p- dove. Yeah. It's probably more of a dove. Yeah, than probably pigeon. more of a dove. Than and pigeon. she goes, I've had this since. Uh, I've had since this. I was a kid. Uh, it says his name as well. Yeah. I can't remember what it is. We don't it. Since childhood. Yeah. He will help us. He will guide us. And she lets it go. <laughs> and and he immediately like, gets electrocuted. <laughs> <by> <laughs> and goes and the shatters on man. the floor. <laughs> It was the single great. It was my favourite part of the movie. And it was the rogue was laughing. It <laughs> yeah, was the like, was just like, holy crap. And, uh, and it was, but it was funny. And, and the wizard was like, ah, oh, fuck. And yeah, and everyone else is like awkwardly like, well, that didn't work. Let's look around the room. <laughs> anyway, essentially behind them, they find a mirror. And when they look in the mirror, uh. Uh, the mirror shows which yeah. tiles so on the ground. That's where we mentioned you know, the rogue pushed the mm. lever when he did that, and yeah. that kind of revealed a mirror. Yeah. So if you look in the mirror, it look, it tells you behind you which steps to take. Yeah. So you kind of have to look at the mirror and walk backwards and step in it to get yeah. out. Now it's actually it's actually really not that easy to do this. Uh, if you ever if you want to like try this this thing, get uh get get an outline of a star, right? You've given them way more credit than <laughs> they probably deserve. <laughs> get an outline of a uh, star, put it in front of a mirror. Don't look at your hand and try and trace the star using just the mirror image. It's really really challenging. It's really mm. really difficult. Obviously, you can't actually do this. But for the sake of the plot, they survive. Yeah. And they, <laughs> because they if they did it would be that's yeah. <laughs> and then my next note is um, they find the orb I forgot they were looking for. Yeah. At this point, so I was they, they kind of like get to a particular area, and then the elf girl teleports it to, to the world's worst villain, <laughs> and then they steal the orb, and then they come back. But during that time, um, the rogue and the um, the rogue I'm even doing it. Nim, <laughs> Nim yeah. Nim it's and, got and all all the malign, they both get hurt, and yeah. they get like taken to a healing place and they're kind of out for the rest of the movie now the bad at this point the bad mage worst villain ever dude um uh, goes to a dragon and, and essentially says I, go and screw stuff up and kill things I want to watch which I just wrote kind of kinky. yeah so so the orb kind of he gets the orb back so yeah. basically what they go back to the city turns out one of those guys there have been a corrupt little demon thing working on the other side and steals mm. the orb back again yeah and then for some reason at that point is when the dragon comes up, which yeah. I don't understand why <laughs> that didn't happen before. Yeah. Nothing had changed. Before. <laughs> I don't know either. But um, big worst villain era ever gets yeah. a dragon and says, hey, go kill things all the Just leave me alive. Oh, oh, he actually makes an agreement like you sacrifice like a hundred souls. Yeah. Um, and then you can roll and cause he offers to serve like the world's worst bad guy yeah. spends all this time and now he's serving someone else. Yeah. I think he's, he didn't think the plan through no. a lot. He's like, I want to rule the world and take stuff over. I need a dragon, but the dragon is more powerful than me. So I yeah. have to be So he, the dragon goes off and starts destroying Azamir. Yeah. Um, and, th- and then the undead girl, yeah. Melora, um, cause by this point she's found a little chamber yeah. Which are the divine energy is put to, and she's given an anti orb. Yeah, and she goes into um, a big thing of lightning. Yeah, it's just really like bright and glowing. So they go to the rooftop and start doing like a battle thing. <laughs> um, this is the point where I switched off. To be fair, to all be right. So, so the dragon's going around. The mages are trying to hold him off with the orb, but then Melora falls down because she's so like turning undead and turning all messed up. Yeah. But while that is happening, my girl um, Lux. And Beric, yeah. they go off to get Demir, Demir, yeah, um, and can like force him to release the curse that has on the girl. Right. So they force that to happen. She regains kind of her healthiness and able to yeah. pick up the orb, yeah. defeat the dragon. The dragon falls into the water and I think closes up. It's very vague. And that's then, the movie. That's basically. the movie, and everyone lives happily ever after. She's except now, for the guy that took on the ice dragon one on one who got devoured. Yeah, he he's he's still dead. Yeah, um, <laughs> but everyone gets healed. Yeah. Um, Melora becomes the the head of the mages guild, which you know that's a quick promotion. But I guess <laughs> if you save the world, you get promotions. Yeah. Um, Beric and, and Lux have do that nod. Lux um, runs away with me. Um, <laughs> pretty sure that never happened in the movie. I'm pretty, I, oh, it's in the deleted scene. Right. Um, <laughs> and then true, pretty much true. everyone's okay. Yeah, so wonderfully cheesy. Oh, and Demora's like locked in a prison. Yes. So I actually, well, because of the guy getting killed by the ice dragon, I thought that the curse was going to take the mage chick. Um, I thought that's, that, you know, she wasn't going to survive. But no, happy yeah. ending there. 
It was wonderfully cheesy, and it's it is wonderfully D and D. And if you if you just need like some inspiration and want to do some world building or think about NPCs, then hey, might as well watch this thing if you can find it. That's not in Russian or Czechoslovakian. Or well, we, we found a legitimate copy. Dobrak. So yeah, well, you did. I couldn't find it for the life of me. Um, but anyway, it's it's really quite fun, and we'll we'll probably do the third movie as well, just because because we're trilogy. Half, well, we're we're two done thirds done away already. We're gonna have to might do a third, well. and there's there's a few other D and D inspired movies out there. Yeah, um, but it's it's. Like, for, for my benefit of being a movie lover, it's not a great movie, but you could watch it for the good qualities yeah. of what it is. Watch it for the bird part, basically. <laughs> watch it, <laughs> watch it for the... That's why it's the... the really kind of, I feel like they're going for humour. Yeah. They just, like, made it awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it was just um, really awkward. So, for the bad CGI, the wonderful dragon, Dungeons and Dragons, the bird bit... It's actually worth taking two uh, hours. No, of life. Lux is probably the be- the, the right. main reason. Or for Nim for my, for me. I thought Nim was great. Lux. Yeah, so Nim. My girl. <laughs> that, that so that's that's kind of our re- <laughs> that's our review of um of Dungeon Dragons movie two. If you noticed, if you notice us sweating throughout, this, <laughs> we can't shut the doors for too long. Yeah, because it gets really hot in here. Yeah, and it's reached that point where it's really hot in here because <laughs> the doors are shut for sound. If you're so. like ever watching this and you just see my hair start going real weird, that's because of the heat and me doing yeah. this all the time. Um, but anyway, thanks for joining us uh, on Dragon Tavern. We're going to keep doing these because you guys like watching them, apparently. Next and, week, we've yeah. got the comic book review of number four of Vox oh, Machina. Yes. Um, and the week after that, we kind of very open to ideas. So yeah. if you do have any ideas, anything you want to chuck our way, um, you want us to do a, a, a video game like Baldur's Gate or, yeah. or a, an, another episode of the animated TV show, or anything. one of the Wizards of the Coast board games. Um, yeah. Although that will be harder to get a hold of. But hey, I work in a board game store. Um, yeah. You should, you should find it easy. I found this. <laughs> Get the board game. I think there actually is Lords of Waterdeep we could play we could at my work. Can we just borrow it for a day? Yeah. yeah. Well, Lords of Waterdeep, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you have any suggestions, and it's not just D&D, if you just want to throw us anything tabletop, maybe mm. Shadowrun or something for a bit, we, of, bit of a change. We want to use this kind of series to explore a lot of different aspects of, mm. of gaming and also um, Dungeon, Dungeon Dragon inspired stuff. Yeah. So and it doesn't have yeah. to be D&D. Exactly, and for me myself, I mean, I just love finding gems like the the cartoon and these movies because I don't know they existed. You guys said review them, and you know it was it enriched my life. I so know. thank you. Just look at your last note. What does it say? Dragon gets messed up. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's oh, us. No. Thank you guys for joining us on Dragon Tavern. Uh, remember to check out the rest of our content. We live stream D and D. We yeah, talk all about that stuff all. is down below. You so know the you, stuff. you know what we're doing. Thanks for watching. Maybe. <laughs>